us is moving in you. The spirit of Jesus <coughs> is moving in us. Yes. The spirit of Jesus sweeps over our souls, making us gentle and making us whole. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, yes. Can you sing that first song again? <laughs> That's very joy. interesting. Let's go, joy. Give me joy in my heart, keep me standing. Give me joy in my heart, I pray. Hallelujah. Give me joy in my heart, keep me praising me. Keep me praising till the end of Four days today with this fifth day is going to be the last day and normally the last day is a day of the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs> so let us once again believe that the most holy trinity building in us and Jesus through our baptism the anointing of the Holy Spirit is given to every person, particularly the baptized one, with the threefold anointings of the prophetic, kingly and the priestly anointing to do the mission what Christ himself began and Christ has fulfilled and he said in John chapter 14, 12, whoever believes in me shall do all that I do. When I first time heard this, I could not believe it. What? I, an ordinary human being, can do all what Jesus did? So when I was listening to uh, one famous priest preaching this in Mumbai, in India, in my first days of the experience of the Lord, I said, I'm sure he made a mistake. I will go and find out exactly the word of God and I'm going to telephone him tonight. <laughs> and as soon as that uh, session was over, I ran to my house and with a great curiosity to find out exactly what is written in John chapter 14, 12. And I was shocked. It is not only what he said is written, Further, it says, you shall do even greater things. <laughs> I felt such a repentance. With my little faith and little understanding, I was trying to judge that famous preacher that what he said might be wrong. Because my human thinking, <laughs> we, we did not think we did not think in divine way. Our thinking. So for that matter, I have to say when Jesus with the group of the apostles asked, what do people talk about me? You remember that in yes. Matthew chapter 16. Then somebody said, in our places, they say, you are a prophet. Somebody say, say, 
John the Baptist listened and came back. Somebody say he's Jeremiah. Somebody say things like that. And Peter boldly raised his hands probably and said, you are the son of the living God. Everybody were astonished how you came to know this. And Jesus said, Simon, son of Jonah, blessed are you. It is not your human idea. <laughs> it is revealed to you by my father. No. It is not the flesh and blood taught you this. It is revealed to my father. By my father. That is called revelation. You know the word revelation means a revealing means removing the veil. Something is hidden, look here, something is hidden. It is there, but we don't know exactly. Then slowly, slowly, it is revealed. <laughs> <laughs> that is called revelation. So Jesus says, it is my father who revealed to you this. Now the point I want to bring home is something else. Pay attention. Then Jesus said, but don't tell this to anybody now. Don't tell this to anybody. That's the thing. We have to proclaim, but not in a... It must be proclaimed in the right time. Now don't tell to anybody because I must go to Jerusalem. People are waiting there to kill me, to persecute me, to torture me, to scourge me, to crucify me, and to be killed. But on the third day I will raise again. The apostles had no understanding about what is raising at that time. They only heard so much that day. He will be persecuted, he will be scorched, beaten up and crucified. Immediately Peter came and said, Lord, Lord, then don't go to Jerusalem. Stay here with us so that you will be safe. Get away, Satan! Mm -hmm. See, maybe one minute back, the Lord said, Blessed are you. It is my Father revealed all these things to you. I appoint you as the head of the church. I give you all authority of heaven and earth. I give you the keys of the Kingdom. heaven and earth. That God is now telling him, Get away, Satan! Why? Now the next point. He's telling the reason. The reason is, human. You are thinking like human being. Mm -hmm. Not like God. <laughs> is it wrong to think like human being? Imagine. This is the important point. It's very important point. Today the whole humanity are trained from kindergarten to doctorate or masters yeah. to think like mm. modern human being. Okay. Even somebody came to see me and said in Germany, of course I don't say Germany anywhere can happen, I think God made me wrong as a woman. I should have been created a man. So I am, I, I know God made a mistake. So I am going, I have consulted with the doctors and they say I can be made a man. And can you imagine I met that person? Her womb is removed, her breasts are removed, and now the, now the, 
male organ is to be fixed in. And it so happened and she is so called in same sex marriage with another woman. And it is that woman came to me. That woman came to me for a counseling, for a discussion. And that woman has, she says, I have three children. Two children from my boyfriend I had. But the third one is between these uh, us two. I said, how, what do you mean? That how can your lady or the woman friend can give you a child? Yeah, it is our understanding. It is somebody's sperm planted in me and uh, it is our joint project. Imagine human thinking. So first of all I asked you, I asked her, sorry, why did you come to me? I tell you the answer. You realize there is something wrong. This is not a right day. She started crying. She says, yes, Thomas, yes. Yes, now I realize. I said, you are only 30 years old. God has a plan to create more children for you from your rightful relationship with the sacrament of marriage and raise them in the, in the plan of God. I feel that. I feel that. I feel that. Do you know, Brother Thomas, I'm just going to jump in here. A friend of mine, a doctor, a female doctor, has been married for 20 years ago, a German doctor. Yeah. Felt she, she was in the wrong body. Consulted, she's very well educated in the church, very, you know, does everything in the church. Consulted with the German bishops at very high levels about this surgery that was going to make him into a man. And they all approved of it. Not one opposition. It's 20 years ago, a long time ago, yeah. not with all the current discussion. And, um, she had all the surgery, she's had he. <laughs> she can no longer live in Germany, she now lives in England, that's how I know her. Um, and she's, she works as a doctor, but, but mentally she's, she's not quite there. Um, but the shocking thing was that this was all approved by church authorities in Germany many years ago. Yeah. So that is again, that is another reason. See now, who is this speaking Peter? He is the highest authority. Yeah. Yeah. He is the first pope. Yeah. About him, Jesus is telling, get away Satan. You are thinking like human being. Yeah. So no wonder yeah. his predecessors, even a pope or a, another bishop think about it. Yeah. But that does not change the truth. No. Now, now, <laughs> that's the thing. So today, if today uh, I just want to bring home, let me complete that story. And so I prayed for her. What prayer is needed there? This is corruption in the conscience. Conscience is the secret core of a human being where the decision should be taken, where God speaks. God speaks. In 1000. 776, 1, 000, <laughs> I got it, 1776, conscience is the most secret core and sacred core of a man where seven. Yeah, seven, 1,776, okay, if I have made a mistake, 1,776. Deep within his conscience, man discovers a law which he has not laid upon himself. 
but which he must obey. You have a driving license, but that does not mean you have a, to, you can do, you can drive anywhere you want. There is a law, according to that you have to drive. You cannot say, my conscience says, I can go now, there is a red signal, but no, car is coming, so I go. <laughs> mm -hmm. By default, by birth, in our conscience, when God created us, there is a natural law. Yes. There is a natural law. Written. So that's it. Yes. Which he has not laid himself, but which he must obey. Its voice ever calling him to love and to do what is good and to avoid evil sounds in his heart at the right moment. For man has in his heart a law inscribed by God. His conscience is man's most secret core and his sanctuary there he is alone with God whose voice echoes in his lips. Now the problem is all this even a bishop says, even theologian says, they are not listening to the voice of God. Jesus is not the centerpiece. Okay, now coming to the point, my point here is to understand why Jesus said to Peter, Satan. What was satanic in him? His thinking. Mm -hmm. So this can be our situation. We are made to think like in the world. But that cannot do evangelization. We have to recognize what is the plan of God for us. So when Jesus said, get away Satan, your thinking is like human being. You are not thinking like God. So next point what we have to grasp is God has given us such a great gift to think like God. To think what God thinks. Okay, now we already heard yesterday many things that beyond human perception. So Jesus said, Jesus said, whoever believes in me will do all that I do and great, great things that I do. And when we, this is a very important aspect on evangelization. Even in order to go to heaven, even the good thief went to heaven. <laughs> Correct? Mm -hmm. Last minute he cried out, Oh Lord, I am sorry for all the sins I have done. Please remember me. Okay, today you will be with me in paradise. But a Christian's life is not simply to go to heaven. When we reach there, Saint Peter will ask, How many souls you have brought? Oh, with much difficulty I reached here. <laughs> that is not the answer. A Christian is a disciple to work from this beginning of life like Jesus to gain souls, Amen. to evangelize, to bring the kingdom into the whole world. So when we say, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. The church fathers teaches us that before the world ends, the world will be like heaven. Mm, wow. Because all humanity must come to know about Jesus. Jesus created the humanity so by creation that in the whole humanity, mm -hmm. even in the creatures, this Jesus is dwelling. Mm -hmm. 
in a mysterious way. Ah, now somebody is getting a healing. Somebody is getting a healing. My left leg is having such a severe pain that is a confirmation of this great message that is in the whole humanity, even in the creation, Jesus as eternal word who created the humanity and the world is present. Thank you, Jesus. Present. And somebody who has a severe pain on the left leg is receiving healing now. Somebody who has a severe pain on the left leg is receiving. Please confirm this through my WhatsApp number 0091 9447196033 This understanding that is why Mars gospel in the last words of Mars gospel is go and proclaim the gospel to uh, no, 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 no. No, 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 no. That is it. That is one word different. That's it. That's it. That's it. No, no. I read it. 1615. 16. He said to them, Go into the whole world and proclaim the gospel to every creature. See, that point. Every creature. He did not say it to humanity. When we say world, what we should understand from the world? Generally, we think about the humanity. <coughs> every creature, every creature. You see, when Saint Anthony was sent to to a village in Italy called Re Re Remini, Remini, there was a church which is closed for many years. He wanted to reopen it, but the people of Remini were so notorious, they said, we don't want any priest here. We know what we want to do. Please go away. He said, okay, okay, I will just go inside the church and pray a little bit and go away. And when he went inside, he removed all the cobwebs and all, and was praying. The Lord told him, I sent you here not to go, but to preach. If these people who has ears don't hear, go to the sea and preach to the fishes who has no ears, they will hear. I say it again. If these human beings who have ears don't listen to you, Go to the sea and preach to the fishes who have no ears and they will hear. I have made an animation film about it. And he and his two brothers went to the sea. It is on the seashore. There was some rock there. On standing on the rock, he began to preach. My brother fishes. You are such a precious creation of God. You are the only creature who were not destroyed at the time of Noah's flood. One of your great grandfather took our prophet Yona from one yes, to the Nineveh. One of your great grandfather gave his own inner organs, liver and eyes to Angel Raphael, 
for healing. And one of your brother gave our Jesus a gold coin to give tax. And like that he began to preach and then these villages, the fishermen saw so many fishes have come, they, they, they stood above the water, water level and listened. Listen. And then all of them came, knelt down and asked pardon. Next day the church was naturally completely full. No wonder this Saint Anthony of Padua, after his death, after 32 years, when his tomb was opened, his tank was not decayed. It is still there in the Padua as a relic. Tank not decayed. <coughs> he, okay. Anyway, now I want to say that as every, I already said Mark and Luke were lay people. I want to repeat that. These are the teachings I gained from the fathers of the church, Saint Jerome. Saint Jerome is a man who was, who lived in Jerusalem nearly 28 years in a cave and he learned Hebrew from the local people. He translated from Hebrew to Greek and Latin the whole Bible. He lived and he walked in the footsteps of Jesus wherever Jesus walked there and went to the culture of the people, understood the word meaning, what exactly they understand. Then only it was translated. That is the Volgata translation, Saint Jerome. So these are the, they were so immersed in the gospel. So, okay, and so, anyway, uh, why I say this, uh, St. Jerome says, and St. John Chrysostom says, even in the writing of the Gospels, our Lord has seen equal importance to apostles and lay people. That is, among the four gospel writers, Matthew is an apostle, first one, and the last one, John is an apostle. But in between these two apostolic pillars, two lay believers who are not apostles, Mark and Luke. Luke. And in the history we see at the last days of Mark, they appointed him as a bishop. But when he wrote the gospel, he was an ordinary layman. And he never had a direct apostolic contact with Jesus, but all what he learned from the teaching of Saint Peter and Paul and others, uh, other apostles. So also Luke. Okay, now this I want to say, mm. we have a, we have a lot of charisms as lay people. Yeah. The Lord has made no difference between apostles and the lay people as far as in the evangelization is concerned. It is a duty of every baptized Christian to evangelize. Because it is the same baptism, whether Peter or Pope Francis or John, John Paul II or Mother Teresa or each one of us, we have received the same baptism. Very often Pope Francis says this, there is no difference in the baptism we have received. So all the gifts are in everybody, but according to each one's call. Like, Georg Bergoglio 
cardinal he was he is chosen to be as pope it is not his choice it was an office god entrusted to him like that every one of us somebody is a bishop somebody is a priest and somebody is a mother of five children or mother of a uh, father of five children it is a very big office saint catherine of siena was 24th child among the 25 children of her parents imagine and she never had the basic education she never went to school she never had writing and learning even when she was a saint she, she never knew how to write and read but what god speak to her she listened to god and from childhood onward she was listening to god and she in her own way says i married him i am his spouse and in a mystical way she received a wedding ring from the lord and her only one book which if it is good if you could by it the name of that is the dialogue exactly it's a dialogue between god and her so she is a lay woman she did not enter into any congregation but she took private vows associated with some some order third order or something and lived in her own home practicing all religious like dr caroline or she practice that holy life imagine it is written in ephesians chapter 2 20 and 19 says god chose someone as apostles or or the church is built on the foundation of apostles and prophets apostles and prophets no 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 i am in ephesians ephesians chapter 2 ephesians chapter 2 words 19 20 says so then you are no longer strangers and sojourners you are fellow citizens with the holy ones and members of the household of god built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets with christ jesus himself is the capstone now here i want to bring it concrete now apostles are like bishops but prophets need not have to be like in the hierarchy as an example catherine of siena mm. she is not even educated she has no religious hierarchical orderly uh-huh. anointing but god speak to her mm. she is equal of parents and what did the lord spoke to her you know in her time the pope was sitting in france not in rome so the lord told catherine of siena you tell the pope that that is not the place for the pope to sit pope's seat must be in rome where the soil is soaked with the blood of the martyrs and she sent a message there is no reply she personally went there to france to make this happen because the lord so we can have a question why god not speaking directly to pope why should this poor woman should speak this now this is what i want to bring home the gift of prophecy the prophetic gift when god has given you a prophetic gift 
when god speak through you it happens yes it happens amen perfectly that is what is important so saint paul says the church is built on the foundation of apostles and prophets so i found this is a very good example saint catherine stayed there she might have prophesied he she might have spoke the lord says your holiness this is not the place for you to be this is not the place of your seat the lord says you must move to rome which is the place soaked with the blood of the martyrs pope wanted but his so many collaborators other bishops nobody don't want it french bishops held him back finally he agreed but when catherine came back home she he again <laughs> this is not allowed but she again went and finally it happened that is how such a great thing happened in the history the papacy moved back to rome so this is the role of lay people the role of lay people even in such great decision making in the church imagine thomas paul is a ordinary layman once the lord gave me a vision showing a eucharistic adoration monstrance and the lord says you will start 100 adoration centers in india my god me i am a layman i have not even one capella or one chapel how will i do it but suddenly i collapsed and i saw a vision an eagle coming down and the word of god i got where there is dead body there will be eagle Lord, what is the meaning? You are doubting my message. No problem, but I give you a confirmation for this message. Because naturally, how could such a prophecy or message? I need that is to be discerned. So the Lord understand my situation. Now, so I, I fell down. I was completely almost paralyzed. I asked water, but I am not able to hold. I am not able to hold the glass of water. My hands are so powerless. And the Lord says, "Where there is dead body, there will be vulture." That means my natural ability and natural thinking should be dead. Then the resurrected power will come. Oh yes. now when you accept this you will spring up with the power of the resurrection praise that is a sign that this is a message from me praise god i said yes lord i accept it and as soon as i accept it exactly the power rushed in me the dead body like me suddenly rose yes sir and now i said lord what should i do to start 100 adoration centers in india after two days a bishop from kashmir that is the extreme north we are from extreme south 4000 kilometers back but this happened in the middle of india when i was giving a, a retreat to priest and religious after two days or three days a bishop from kashmir called me thomas paul you must come here this is a place terrible because of the border of pakistan 
and all these things. We have a lot of problems. You must come to preach retreat to my priest. I thank you, my Lordship, but I am booked one and a half years every week for retreat for priests or seminarians and the religious. It's all annual retreat planned one year in advance. I cannot cancel it. Whew. Then can you send some people so that they sit here and pray? Now I again see the vulture coming down. Mm. I asked him, My Lordship, will you give me a facility where I send people and they can have day and night adoration? Oh, day and night? Will they pray day and night? Yes, here yeah, they can sit in my chapel and pray. I am the bishop, I give permission. What else you need? Then I told him this message, send them. Next day I sent the first batch of people, 4,000 kilometers traveling from Kerala to Kashmir, the first adoration center open. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. And also I told my people, this whole journey, it takes I think five days, Five days train journey. These five days you do fasting and prayer. Mm -hmm. In fact, at that time I had no money even for the train ticket. <laughs> so forget about their food. <laughs> so also I said, you fast and pray all this train journey for throughout India. Throughout India, you are going to travel throughout India. You pray rosary. Blessing. They were so delighted. Good chance to pray. Good. Tea and coffee you can drink. That will be delivered by the, in the train, people. <laughs> and the first adoration center started now. It's nearly 25 years. It is still going on. And followed by so many hospitals. In a, in a hospital, a doctor's sister called me and said, Thomas, we have such a problem from the opposition people against Christianity. They made false allegations, made court cases. They are not allowing us to survive here. What should I do? I said, do you have a chapel in the hospital? Yes, yes. But is there anybody praying there? Oh, no. We are only few sisters and nurses are busy. As soon as the mass is over, the chapel is closed. That's the point. Jesus is not to be closed in an iron box and kept there. No. He must be open. He is the light of the world. Mm -hmm. And then the power will flow. I will send two girls. They will turn by turn. Two hours, two hours will stay and pray. You give them one room in your hospital, food from the canteen. But let your sisters and the nurses and the watchmen, the staff of the hospital, take half an hour, ten by ten, half an hour. Half an hour, tell them. They come either early or go late, half an hour and pray. And give, keep a board in front of the operation theater. Don't sit here. Please go and sit in the chapel and pray. Because people are crowded in front of the operation theater, bystanders. In India, there are so many bystanders. Now. And slowly, it so happened in one month time, all the darkness went away. Amen. And slowly, they picked up this uh, idea, and the nurses and the religious sisters and all the people began to take ten, ten, and I think. After six months, I withdraw my team. Even now, it is going on. Praise God. Okay, so like this, I did not make any advertisement. The Lord said, don't tell this to anybody at that time, because that can cause even... Uh, uh, it is a contemplative ministry, mm -hmm. without much knowledge. Brother, this you. 
Yeah. Yeah, I did not announce to anybody. Nowadays, I am speaking. The, the story about the, the opening in the Lyceum in the Little Ah, Lyceum. <laughs> so, when almost there was at a time 35 Sundays we ourselves were managing with our own people, and slowly, slowly, more than 100. Adoration centers opened. That is how India got such a powerful evangelization mm -hmm. strength. And at that time, I was very popular in my mission. The Lord inspired me, I said it, uh, to come to Europe. Uh, at the top of a European missionary, when I prayed, I heard the voice. We gave our life for your country, how can you help? Thank God for this. I said, it's not possible to thank God for such a thing. Then I heard a voice, can you come to Europe and help our people? My God! I was so much touched by that and spontaneously I said yes. And I never knew anybody in Europe. I knew only St. Therese and Francis Assisi, <laughs> Europeans. Anyway, so I, the Lord asked me to start a prayer house for praying for the Europe. So within a year, I got a call from Germany, a sister who is running an evangelization center. So I came to Germany in year 2000. And immediately I started opening adoration centers, many places. Then when I was visiting like this in a pilgrimage in Lisieux, so I was, whenever I am in France preaching, I go to Lisieux. I think second or third time when I was in Lisieux, in the Basilica of Lisieux, I'm seeing all the top paintings, everything, and admiring uh, about St. Therese and her uh, visions and all. I felt a power drawing me to its back. I'm just going back, 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 back. And then I realized I am taking, I am taken to the keller or the basement, like this basement. And when I went to the basement, it is written like here, it is written conference hall, like that it is written Capella the Adoration. Adoration Capella. Now I realize who is pulling me. <laughs> <laughs> I entered there, nobody is there. People come for pilgrimage, they watch and watch and go away. But in the Capella the adoration, of course the Lord is not exposed there, but in the tabernacle. I saw there a very painful face of the Lord with the crown of thorns, crying. He says, can you sit with me sometime? Sure. And I sat there. Whole day, he don't leave me. I sat there. By evening, he said, can you bring two, three people and have a continuous adoration here? I said, yes. When you go out, take the left turn, the main street. When you walk 200 meters, stand there, look up. There is you will find a board flat for rent. Contact that person, take that flat on rent and bring your people in one month time and start. I was so curious, I ran out <laughs> exactly. I put my steps, 200 <laughs> steps. I looked up exactly, the board is written flat for rent. I wrote the number, I called him. Is it available? Yes, it is available for rent. You come to my office tomorrow, 9 o'clock, I will uh, fix it up for you. And next day morning, so I ran and came to him and said, 
I saw you somewhere. So we discussed all the thing. He said one month, thousand euro is a rent for a month. But three months rent must be in advance given as a caution. Then he said, I saw you somewhere. I said, I also think that I saw you somewhere. Ah, we were in the morning holy mass sitting nearby and giving peace. Ah. And he said, oh, you were with me in the holy mass in the Lisieu Basilica. So, okay, so you don't need caution money, okay? Mm. Only rent is okay. No advance. Come whenever you want. It is booked in your day. And after a month, I was coming. I had no money at that time also. So when I uh, arrived in, arrived in uh, Paris, my friend who used to collect me from the airport, when he came, he took me in his car. He said, Thomas, as I was coming to the airport, a woman who attended one of our retreats met me. He said, will you meet Thomas Paul? Yes, I'm going to pick him up. Then give this envelope to him. That was exactly 1,000 euro. <laughs> I tell you every day the providence of the Lord led us. And I got two wonderful young men to pray there. And it so happened, the parish priest of Lisieux Cathedral fall in love with this young man. <laughs> because in this time, or at that time, young men sitting and praying day and night is not easy. So, one of that person was a somehow ex-seminarian, but I only integrated him to the Lord, and then he wanted to go to seminary. But after three years, he felt that is not his call. He, by the time, met a woman, and uh, they discerned it is to married. I also was in that discernment point. So I told uh, him, now you are free, you continue the ministry like this. This parish priest, asked me, he says, the Lisieux Cathedral, there is a vacancy of a, of a, of a sacristan. The sacristan retired, he is not getting a sacristan. Mm -hmm. Thomas Paul, I think this boy can be a good sacristan. So what about my adoration? <laughs> if he is got taken away, why you worry? He is getting the key of the tabernacle of the Lisieux Cathedral. He can adore as much as time there and get some people to adore. Yeah, yeah. I will allow that. Let the adoration be moved from the basilica to the cathedral. Mm -hmm. <sighs> and then I thought in another way, he is going to marry. And that woman, whom she is also working partly as a volunteer in the Lisieux uh, Monastery uh, in, the, in the Carmel. And if they have to marry, first of all, naturally they need an income and a job, you know. And this is uh, sacristan in France and Germany is a very decent job with the government salary and all, all prerequisites. And he said, I will give them a flat in the cathedral premises. So my adoration, instead it is shifted to the, that is how even now in the cathedral of Lisieux, there is day and night Eucharistic adoration. Amen. Oh, wow. So anyway, now my point is, even as lay people, God uses to do great things without big, <laughs> big propaganda and all the things. So let us sing a song and asking the Lord to, uh, to know in this. Now I want to further expand about how to grow in the charism. Mm -hmm. You can stand up and sing a song okay. asking the you sing, give me oil in my lamp. 
Give me oil in my lamp, I pray. Give me oil in my lamp, keep me serving. Keep me serving till the end of day. Sing Hosanna, sing Hosanna, sing Hosanna to the King of Kings. Sing Hosanna, sing Hosanna, sing Hosanna to the King. Come, Holy Spirit, come, Holy Spirit. Give me love in my heart, keep me serving. Give me love in my heart, I pray. Now I want to bring home this idea how the apostles were chosen and what has been given to them at the very first. They were not sent to any seminary. <laughs> they were ordinary fishermen. In Matthew chapter 10, verse 8, you see, Matthew chapter 10, let's see, the mission of the twelve. Then he summoned his twelve disciples and gave them authority over unclean spirits to drive them out and to cure every diseases and every illness. Look at that. The names of the twelve, okay, that is written here and again continuing. Chapter 5. Jesus sent out these twelve after instructing them, sending out. Do not go into pagan territory or enter a Samaritan town. That was at that point of time. Go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. As you go, make this proclamation. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Proclaim the kingdom. Mm. And then, you see then, very important point. Cure the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the leper, drive out demons. <laughs> Amen. This Amen. has become so strong in my heart. Mm -hmm. it, 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 it really worked in Paris when the French people, when I said this, I made them to make it a slogan. Even now when they meet me anywhere in Paris, either in the railway station or in a uh, airport or in this you like place in they as soon as they see me hey Thomas Paul heal the sick raise the dead turn the leper cut the deep heal the sick <laughs> it has become so strong in those people <laughs> imagine these apostles are going go for what? Proclaim the kingdom. And what? Heal the sick. Raise the dead. Cleanse the leper. Mm -hmm. Cast out demons. So, raise the dead may, can have a different meaning also. That you see, we have so many people almost paralyzed Christians. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. Yeah, yes. spiritually. But at the same time, it is also verbatim. It is literally happening in the early churches. There were many saints who used to raise the dead. All these things should come back now. Mm -hmm. Then only the supernatural power of God can work. These words are really truth and it will, it happened and it will still happen. Mm -hmm. You see, you see every time when we read the Gospels, now the last Sunday, Ephrathah, 
the man's ear, people are dumb and deaf. Mm. Symbolically, that is the situation even now. Yeah. People are listening so many worldly things, seeing worldly things, speaking worldly things. But when it comes to the word of God, when it comes to the charisms, when we charism means the spiritual gifts. Mm. When it comes to the gifts, we don't know. There are priest seminaries, eight years, nine years they are learning, but there is never a one hour session on charism. Whereas we have three chapters of St. Paul teaching on charism. In one of the priest seminaries I was preaching, it was in a mission. They are trained for mission. I said, charisms are tools for evangelization. See, when Jesus called the apostles, the first thing given to them was charisms. Heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the leper, cast out demons. This is Matthew. Now, go to Luke, Luke chapter 9. He called, he summoned the 12 apostles. He gave them all power and authority. What chapter is that, Luke? What? Luke chapter 9. Luke chapter 9. Luke chapter 9. It's very touching. He, it's, we can summarize like this. He summoned the twelve and gave them power and authority and sent them. So we can conclude like this. Three thumbs, three fingers. He called them, he gave them, he sent them. Suppose you call a carpenter to work for you, to make a table. What do you expect him to bring? He must have the tools, the proper tools, otherwise he cannot work. If somebody come well dressed but have no tools, hey, how will you work? Have you not bought the tools? No, I don't have the tools. I thought you have the tools. Okay, okay, then goodbye. I will get somebody else who has the tools. <laughs> <laughs> it's very simple. <laughs> so when God is sending people to evangelize, is God is so foolish that he sent them without the tools for evangelization? No. So you see the Gospels. He called them. He gave them he sent. and sent them. Mm. See this. This was a very touching point for me. He called, he summoned the twelve and gave them and gave them power and authority over all demons and to cure diseases. And he sent them to proclaim. Proclamation is also a charism, a gift of Holy Spirit. We cannot proclaim without the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peter, he could not even proclaim Jesus to a maid servant. He was so in fear that night when he was sitting at the coal fire, a woman asked, are you one of his disciples? Oh, no, no, I don't even know him. Imagine the heart of pity. Heart of pity. But on the day of the Pentecost, when he was filled with the Holy Spirit, he stood up in front of thousands of people and began to proclaim. Where from he got this power? And the very first preaching, 3,000 people received baptism. There you go. There you go. So only with the anointing when we preach, the, our preaching will touch the soul. It is not enough we speak some good idea. It must have anointing. Anointing. And so for anointing, it is a gift of preaching. When the gift of preaching works, he gives us all things 
what you have to learn jesus himself said my teaching is not mine nobody is appointed to teach their own idea here we all through baptism to proclaim what the kingdom of god not with your own intelligence but from the intelligence of god the teaching of the church in what you can counsel diverbum it's very clearly mentioned it is quoted in catechism paragraph 85 that in the catholic church no one is allowed to interpret the gospel by himself we cannot understand the meaning of the gospel with our human intelligence so it is written 85 paragraph 85 please note down paragraph 85 it is in fact what is from the diverbum paragraph 10 the task of giving an authentic interpretation of the word of god whether in its written form or in the form of tradition has been entrusted to the living teaching office of the church alone its authority in this matter is exercised in the name of jesus christ diverbum 10 par- paragraph 2 this means the task of interpretation has been entrusted to the bishops not alone in communion with the successor of peter the bishop of rome that is the infallibility of the pope these days we hear pope's message you can hear directly from the vatican website that is what i would recommend because all the other media writes in a distorted way never watch any body message that pope said like this no you listen to pope and understand what he says because they the 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 public media their agenda is their own so many other other Uh, matters they are not interested to bring the right teaching of the church to the people not at all so the old thank god in the technology and the facility god has given to us that we have the live channel of what you can every day everything what pope speaking is like you know about 25 years back or maybe 30 years back i was so touched with the teaching of the general audience of pope and i read it in the vatican magazine or the newspaper of servatore romano and i know a priest in rome i told him can you subscribe for me by post to reach that he did it he went to a servatore office and gave my address to and he paid for it and i started getting it i realized this is the teaching needed for the lay people but where is this available for the lay people particularly in india in kerala so what i did i got an inspiration to translate this into malayalam my mother tongue and of course english and make a monthly magazine called apostolic teaching so i want to have permission from our archbishop cardinal so what i did i really made one like that and got it printed so that i want to show him what exactly it is what i want to do although it takes whether he approve or not i made it one so that he know what exactly i am going to do and i showed him see these are the teaching general audience message of pope john paul ii it is so wonderful but there is nobody no facility for our kerala people so i 
want to do this. I made it as a model to show you. If you approve, then only I will do it. Mm. He just turned pages and little bit he read and he looked at me with the more wide open eyes. He said, Thomas Paul, where do you get these ideas? In, we have so many dioceses, so many priests, so many congregations. Every diocese has a printing press and magazine, but never they got an idea to do this. My son, please do it. God bless you. Now, you know, I have been doing this more than 25 years this magazine. But later on, it so happened, uh, a congregation took the right of this Osservato Romano to translate and publish in Kerala. So, legally, I have to stop it. And by the time already internet is become very popular, it was available, then it was no more needed. But that, because of that, I had to learn every general audience of the Pope, and I uh, check the translation, I make a short commentary on this magazine. That is how I fallen in love with the papal teaching. So I am, my thinking is completely with the thinking of the Pope and thinking of the Church. I cannot think other way around. I am continuously updated what Pope pre teaching. So many people speak, oh, this Pope is making, I said, this Pope has not made anything wrong. He is continuing all what all the Popes have done. Absolutely there is no, no change. The Holy Spirit is guiding so perfectly. And when John Paul II came into papacy, in his first encyclical, Redemptor Hominis, in the introduction itself, something written I want to share, he said, I thank God for my uh, predecessor, predecessor, no? The one who is earlier? Yeah. Cardinal Luciani. He was John Paul I. And he, when he was chosen as Pope, he said, I have nothing to do by myself other than what John 23rd, John, and Paul the Sixth started. So I will choose first time in the history a double name, John Paul. That is how John Paul II came to existence. And John Paul II said, I also cannot do anything else other than continuing this great work they did in the Second Vatican Council and how the Holy Spirit led through John and Paul. So I will continue to be John Paul II. We must know how this John Paul, John Paul means how. So it is a continuation of the Second Vatican Council and this papal teachings of John and Paul's mind and heart, how Holy Spirit let this continued in that. And when John Paul II as his his study and his mind was fully John of the Cross. He was a, he learned, his doctorate was in John of the Cross's works. And he got a wonderful collaborator that was Cardinal Ratzinger, Joseph Ratzinger. Joseph Ratzinger as Cardinal, <coughs> As a young priest, he was fascinated in the teaching of St. Augustine. 
he completely <laughs> eaten the whole Saint Augustine's teachings. And his doctorate was Saint Augustine's love for the church. Imagine the Protestantism began because of one man, Martin Luther, he was a Augustinian monk, but he never understood the teaching of Saint Augustine. Here is another German who really understood the teaching of Saint Augustine, that is Joseph Ratzinger. And he was so active in Second Vatican Council as a young priest, he went as an assistant to the Cardinal of Cologne to help him, but he was running here and there, making draft, correcting draft and theological uh, support, giving he was completely like a hero running around in the whole Second Vatican Council. <laughs> and so when John Paul II and Carol White came up and he became Pope, he took him as his assistant. Hallelujah! Now we have two pillars, John of the Cross and St. Augustine. Nearly 25 years and Cardinal Ratzinger became the prefect of the the Lycastery of the faith. faith. Imagine, I thank God we lived in such an era of these two, two great people of wisdom perpetuating one side Saint Augustine and the other side Saint John of the Cross. This is how the mind of the church is to be understood. And they had no dispute, they had no, they had so much in harmony. So after the period of St. John Paul II, there was no doubt the next Pope became Cardinal Ratzinger. He took the name Pope Benedict XVI, taking the Benedictian, because Benedict, St. Benedict was a, Saint or his heart was renewal of the Europe. So he wanted to. Anyway, so why I said all these things? I said all these things. When we have a gift of preaching, we should not preach something what we like. Our charism is to preach what the church is teaching. Then only we will grow. In my beginning of my preaching, once I was preaching on Holy Spirit, then a priest came to me and asked, uh, Brother Thomas, have you read Dominum Bififi Candum? Oh, sorry, I don't even know how to pronounce that. <laughs> oh, you don't know that? But what you are teaching is almost what is written in that. <laughs> so I was so fascinated to read that. I ran to the book house and purchased Dominum Vivificandum, the encyclical of Pope John Paul II on Holy Spirit. It was not even translated in Malayalam. So I got it translated by my influence and printed it in my office, uh, in my book. I had a book house publishing house, so to publish all the papal teaching, all the popes and secretals I published, and packets of packets, boxes we carry into all the priest retreat and gave to them. All this I did. And this Dominum Vivi Candum was an eye-opener on Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. That is where I realized Although I was speaking it, but with authenticity I could speak what exactly John Paul II has written. And then later on I got another book which says, which is known as All the Writings of John Paul II about Holy Spirit, or Holy Spirit in all the writings of John Paul II. It's available in Amazon. That was a treasure, treasure, a big book. And the author of that who compiled it, a priest from USA, he said, no other pope ever written 
so much about Holy Spirit. And I tell you frankly, although we say come Holy Spirit, we speak about Holy Spirit, we speak about, we have very little teaching on the Holy Spirit. And the reason is, it's interesting, in one of the teaching in Catechism, it is written by Saint Gregory of Nazianzus. He is a great theologian and church father. He said, in the Old Testament, we have teaching about God the Father. And the New Testament teach about God the Son. But there is no testament teach, there is no testament teach about Holy Spirit. Why? Holy Spirit Himself will teach that from our heart. <laughs> so, even in Vatican Council, there is not so much teaching on Holy Spirit. But that is why Pope John Paul II's encyclical on Holy Spirit is very relevant. Mm -hmm. it, it's very interesting, in Medjugorje, the emphasis Mary in her messages, yeah. people, her emphasis on the Holy Spirit is yeah. enormous. Very good, yeah. yeah. So Blessed Mother is the one person in the whole Gospels who actually know more, a maximum on Holy Spirit. That is why she was in the she prepared the apostles for Pentecost. Is it time now? No. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Pardon? Okay. 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 Now I. It's quarter past ten now, almost. Okay. So let us now conclude here and then. Uh, uh, before we close the session, I want to make a special anointing prayer to open the charisms. Yeah, that's what. So don't go away. I want to explain a little more on charism exactly. Then I will pray for you to open the charisms. And then from tomorrow onwards, something different will happen in you. <laughs> Okay, so let us now thank God. So, what I want to bring home is in charism of preaching, why there are not many preachers? I tell you the reason is no preacher is really learning the teaching of the church. The Holy, the Holy Spirit will not use wrong teaching. But, um, I'm if just speaking to us, not, not the world, the seminaries are responsible for the training of the priests. It should be going out to every seminary. Exactly. I tell you, it is no, no more a secret. It is also public. Even in the priest seminary, there are many theologians they are not teaching the way right teaching. Yeah, they're not yeah. teaching Everybody. The right teaching. Yeah, that's yeah. Yeah. They're yeah. not using the Catholic. Yeah, they are and not. So the See, being taught, uh, 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 as Cardinal Ratzinger, there is a book written by, that is Pope Benedict, as Cardinal Ratzinger written, what is the role of theology? Which he defined the role of theologian is to explain the church teachings and defend the church teaching, not to work on contrary to that. I mean, we probably all know theologians yeah. who were good men who were now atheists. Do you know what I mean? There's something so fundamentally wrong yeah. with what the theologians do. Yeah. There are some theologians who teach totally wrong things. So. So then what will happen is, this is all is existing from the beginning of the church. Yes. That is why the church had, uh, uh, church had uh, to face opposition from outside. When the battle dams over, then came problems from inside. That is how the heretics the heretics were from inside. Mm -hmm. Now, Arius was a very good priest. 
and there are many bishops and many priests who are in the church started teaching heretism. So this is what Jesus already said in the gospel. When you were sleeping, the devil came and planted the weeds. Yes. That is, the interpretation says, that is about the wrong teaching. Mm. So, in the time, every time the church is knowing this, and such wrong teaching, even if it is theologians or bishop, anybody teach, it will never grow, survive. Because the church, so official teaching will crush them. Church official teaching, the Lord will raise it in a proper way. The, one of the problems we have, I think, brother, is the lay people can see the teachings are going skewed. And, and we're becoming more like the Protestants. I'll read the Bible and make my interpreter, interpretation. I don't need to listen to the magisterium or the church because so much heresy has been coming up. There's apostasy everywhere. Yeah. There's rebellion. There's, there's rationalization. There's intellectualization. Yeah. Um, we have to bring the church back to its roots, to back to the catechism and the Bible. Amen. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, this is what our yeah. should do. See, that is why after Second Vatican Council, all the Second Vatican Council has not done any change in any dogmas. Please understand. There are so many false teachings yes. comes. No dogmatic teaching was changed. No. But it has made more understanding and more uh, explanation for the present era of our life in the modern world. And after 20 years of the Second Vatican Council, the Council Fathers met in 1985 to evaluate what is the fruits of the Council. And then an anonymous decision was we need to integrate these Second Vatican Councils beautiful teaching and to reach, in order to reach that to the ordinary faithful, we need to have a document, a book that must be prepared. That is how the Catechism of Catholic Church came to existence. So in this, the traditional catechism plus in, 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 in infused with the Vatican Council teachings and the other Papal teachings included, so that it can be one document which covers the complete teaching of the church. Now in the meanwhile, let me tell you, this is the latest edition which is written as second edition. The only one revision made in this is about the inclusion of revision of paragraph 2267 about the capital punishment. Yeah. That is the only change. But in this text, I recommend this because from, from page number 700 onwards, it, is, it has such a big index. In this index, you have references to all the biblical texts and all the papal teachings, all the church fathers' teachings. This helps us. Suppose you have a reading today's gospel, you want to know what is the interpretation of the church, you go to that gospel reference and find out the word of God, find out the teaching of the catechism. That is added to antiquities. Okay, now we stop here. We stop here and we make a break for 15 minutes. And when you come back, we are straight away going into detail of the charisms and then we pray for the charism. So let us thank God. Concluding this with this understanding, we have to interpret the gospel only with the teaching of the church. Amen. That let us take it. And then we have to learn a little more about the teaching of the church. Then only our charisms and the Lord can utilize us in the evangelization.
Thank you, Jesus. Thank Praise you, Jesus. you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Praise you, Jesus. Amen. You, Jesus. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus.